Hello friends, uh, welcome to a new video uh, with regards to UPSC. Now uh, you know that uh, the prelims are right in the corner uh, because uh, uh, the notification has come. So I wish to uh, talk to you about a session that is of importance in UPSC. It's regarding the art and culture part. Approximately 5% of the questions you can expect. That means something around uh, 3 to 5 questions out of the 100 questions in UPSC preliminary examination. So uh, in this video, I want to um, talk to you uh, about uh, certain aspects that can be helpful for your prelims as well as for your mains. Because if you look into the 20, uh, 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 21, you have seen in GS paper 1, you got questions on Bhakti movement, right? So I wish to talk to you about how the cultural assimilation uh, has happened uh, uh, in the matters of temple architecture. Uh, somebody who is actually into the basics of culture art and culture know about the temple architectural styles in India. If you look into the deep south, you can see the uh, Dravidian school of temple architecture. And if you look into the uh, areas above Narmada, you see the Nagara school of temple architecture. In the Nagara school, uh, which was started during the Gupta period and in the Dravida school, you can see it started during the Pallava period. And the Deccan region that is uh, between on top of uh, river Kaveri, and downwards of river Narmada, usually that's the area you find the Chalukyan, uh, the Hoysalan empires and that's where you find the Besara architecture that is a mix of both North Indian as well as the South Indian style. But the Besara style is more in tune with the South Indian architecture that's why it's also known as the Karnataka Dravida style. So that's the basic of the temple architecture, right? At the same time, I want you to understand uh, how the cultural assimilation has happened through a kind of a temporal architecture. See, if you look into it, uh, the oldest architecture, right, when it comes to the peninsular India, that's uh, Dravida school, uh, you see uh, temples like the Kailashnath temple that was uh, there during the Pallava period, right, Kailashnath temple. The same copy of the temple you can find in, in the, uh, in the uh, Chalukyan period, right, because the Pallava king was defeated by the Chalukyan king and Queen Loka Mahadevi has actually made the Virupaksha temple during the 740 AD. That time you can see the same structure has been adopted in the Virupaksha temple. And if you further move forward, you can see the same copy of that Virupaksha temple, the same uh, plan with slight modifications has been found in the Ellora cave, that is the Kailashnath temple, again during the period of the Rashtrakuta king Krishna first. So you can see uh, the Kailashnath temple in the Pallava time, replicated in the form of Virupaksha temple in uh, the uh, Chalukyan period and the same again replicated during the Rashtrakutas. Rashtrakutas were the feudatories of Chalukyas with their headquarters at Manya Kate and it is again replicated at, uh, in the Ellora Caves in the form of Kailashnath temple. So that's a UNESCO World Heritage Center. So you can see the same architecture has been replicated in multiple times. That is why it's happening because the artisans and craftsmen of the original temple had been taken uh, by the victorious kings to build their own temple. Right. So this is this is what you can find in the medieval architectures also. For example, if you see the Humayun stone, it has been replicated in the form of Taj Mahal. So Humayun stone acted as a model for Taj Mahal. And lately, Taj Mahal was again replicated in the south in Aurangabad in the form of Bivika Makbara. That was completed by the son of Aurangzeb, and Aurangzeb was campaigning in Deccan for around 26 years. So Aurangabad was made his de facto capital. So that is why you can see even architectural styles, whether it's uh, ancient India, Hindu architecture, or uh, the Islamic architecture, you can see that replication happening in many parts of India, and that can uh, that shows a cultural exchange how it's happening. So please do focus on art and culture part, and uh, you have many books in the market but if you see the very traditional books where you get questions I would say it's uh, A.L. Basham's I wonder that is India and also Ubinder Singh's uh, Ancient India and Early Medieval India these are the two books that you need to look into for art and culture part so if you require more videos or more sessions or if you and I wish to know about the comments and feedbacks regarding this video please do post uh, beneath this video Right, and prepare well for UPSC examinations. Uh, thank you all. Good luck.